Oh, sorry, sorry. I couldn't tell this guy from this guy. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Tessar. One eyes Barry from Barry Science Lab. And today it's kind of a test episode. Today we will be computing derivatives using their own definition. All right. What does that mean? <laughs> well, also get ready. All right. So you move out of the way. Now let us honor Sir Isaac Newton for creating the beautiful subject of calculus. Well, the derivative of f uh, prime of x when x is equal to minus 1. By the way, f of x is equal to 1 over square root of 3 minus x. But you don't need that information, do you now? Okay, I think you need that information. Anyways, what we're going to do, we're going to start with a classic, people. A classic. We're going to start with the equation we all know and love. We don't really love it that much. But anyway, so prime of x is equal to the limit as well. h approaches 0 of... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. You know them, you don't really love them. It's the limit equation. So, now, let's start by plugging in. Hey, hey, you're in my way. All right, so, actually, let's not plug in. Why? Because the noggin's not working. But anyway, what is f of x plus h? We know f of x is 1 over square root of 3 minus x. Again, you don't need that. Shut up, we need that. But anyways, if we plug x plus h into our equation, we get 1 over the square root of 3 minus x plus h. And then we can do the same to f of x. And then we divide that all by h. So now, of course, when we plug in, it's going to give us a denominator of 0 since, you know, u. But, well, can we fix that? Well, yes using some algebraic trick that you probably learned in 8th grade. So, this algebraic trick will be shown later on. But, let's start now by plugging in, because the noggin is finally working again. Alright, 1 over the square root of 3 minus minus 1 means 3 plus 1 minus 8. And then that's subtracted by 1 over the square root of 3 minus minus 1 is 4. So, we divide that by 8, giving us this monstrosity. So, how do we get this rogue little uh, weird square root out of the way? Square root of 4 minus 8. That's ugly. And that's even uglier than pi. You know, the, the infinite kind. The kind that you can never eat because it's constantly infinite. And it never repeats. That, mama mia, that's a nice pop. How many profiles is that exactly? All right. Mama mia, that's an infinite pie. That's a lot of flavors. Or so Volta would say. But anyways, this, the monstrosity we are left with. But how can we fix this? Well, first, let's try and make a common denominator. See if that'll work. Let's try and mediate the differences between the fractions. Shall we? All right. So, let's multiply this fraction by 2 over 2, which gives us, well, 2 over square root of 2 times 4 minus 8. Then let's multiply this fraction by 4 over the square root of 4 minus 8, which gives us 2 minus the square root of 4 minus 8 over 2. 4 minus 8 is divided by 8. Now, this looks horrible. That's because it is. But still, we're going to get there eventually. And eventually it's never. X prime of x, oh, x prime of x, the limit is h goes to 0. And so we get 2 minus the square root of 4 minus 8 over 2 h square root of 4 minus 8. Man, that dead mosquito has been lying there all day. Oh, sorry, I got a little distracted. All right. So, mm, anyways, now what we're going to do, we're going to use a cool mathy trick called conjugation. 
it basically just takes advantage of the difference of squares. So, um, yeah, this part is going to be pretty boring. But, and bra uh, brace ourselves. There's going to be a lot of math. So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by the fraction. 2 plus square root of 4 minus 8 divided by 2 eighths square root of 4 minus... Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. But absent-minded. And this takes advantage of the difference of squares to re-rationalize our numerator. So, let's get ready for some distributing. Tick tock, tick tock. Uh, don't use tick tock. Alright, so, 2 minus the square root of 4 minus 8 times 2 plus the square root of 4 minus 8. So now let's use the difference of squares and mediate those differences. So, um, this is boring. I'll just tell you that much. But 4 plus 2 times the square root of 4 minus 8 minus 2 times the square root of 4 minus 8 uh, minus square root of 4 minus 8 whole squared, giving us 4 minus, well, 4 minus 8. But now we distribute the negative giving us 0 minus minus 8. Right. And now what we do is we do a little thing and we rotate this and we make this and we get 8. Yay! So now that is going to be the top. But what about the bottom? Uh, we're writing f prime of x is getting pretty annoying, so I'll stop. Limit is 8 approaches 0. You need that in your equation. That's why I keep writing it. If it was unnecessary, I'd have stopped writing it after the first part. So anyways, 2... Mm, oh, actually, wasn't it just 8? Then you divide that by 2, 8, 4, minus 8. 2 plus square root of 4 minus 8. Now, the issue's mostly been sorted out on the top. But what about the bottom? Look like freaking crap down there. So, what's the with the bottom? Now, you might be thinking, oh, Sabrina, just gonna give us zero if we plug in, which is still rational, right? Oh my god, that, that mosquito is getting in my way. But, well, that's wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, because if we plug in now, get zero over two times zero times for 2 and then that times 2 times 2 but there's a 0 meaning we get 0 over 0 that's not good is it now so instead what we're going to do is we're going to keep simplifying and we can actually cancel out this guy and his guy and so that gives us the limit is 8 approaches 0 of not 0, but 1 over 2, 4 minus 8, 2 times square root of 4 minus 8 times 2. What the hell is moving there along? Alright, and they stopped, probably because of me. But anyways, this is our new one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply... Uh, we're gonna call in. What we're going to do is we're going to distribute, and so that gives us four square root of four minus eight uh, plus mm, Professor Sabuno. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I just lost all my memory. But anyways, mm, two uh, four minus eight two times four minus eight. So that gives us uh, our limit is. 8 approaches 0. Wait, isn't it? Oh, um, I have to do the distributive property because I'm losing it. I'm literally losing it in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that should be 2 times 4 minus 8 times 4 minus 8. And then you add that with well, 2 or 4 minus 8 times 2. And, well, that should be... Uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. So, zero. So, when we set h to zero, we get four times.
times the square root of 4 minus 0 is still square root of 4 plus 2 times of 4 minus 0. So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, that gives us 1 over 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 times 4 is 8, giving us 1 over 16, meaning that the derivative is 3 plus 4 plus, okay, I'm getting bored, I'm just going to stop at 6. We missed the 5, boys, we missed the 5. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.